Hello everyone! In this control engineering and control theory tutorial, we explain how to specify and quantify a transient response of a dynamical system. That is, we will precisely define and graphically explain peak time, settling time, rise time, and overshoot. We provide a clear explanation of how to numerically quantify a step response of a system on the basis of an observed step response graph. The step response can also be called as the transient response. The step response graph can either be experimentally measured or numerically simulated on the basis of a system model. Besides the system model, the step response graph is probably one of the most important piece of information that we can obtain about our system. And this is very important. So keep in mind this. The step response graph is crucial for understanding the dynamics of our system. Namely, we can even reconstruct or estimate the model of the system on the basis of the observed step response graph. Then, the step response graph provides us with very useful information for estimating the stability of the system and for designing controllers. From the control engineering perspective, the step response graph is quantified by number one, settling time, number two, peak time, number three, rise time, number four, overshoot or percentage overshoot. And there are some other quantities that can be used to specify and analyze the step response of the system. However, in this video tutorial, we will focus on these four specifications that are the most important ones. The values of peak time, settling time, rise time, and percent overshoot are very important for control design. Namely, we often specify the desired system behavior in terms of the values of these parameters of the transient response. Then, on the basis of the desired values of these parameters, we design the control system. Also, for second-order systems, we can explicitly relate the damping ratio, natural frequency, bandwidth, and some other properties of the dynamical systems with the values of the peak time, settling time, rise time, and percentage overshoot. That is, we can connect the time domain characteristics and specifications with the frequency specifications, and we can design controllers. Very important fact. Okay. But wait a second, what is a step response of a dynamical system? Here is our dynamical system. It's represented by this block. And it can be a physical system or even our numerical model in a computer. However, in this video tutorial, I will assume that this is a real physical system, such as a robot, a car, airplane, or a similar system. Every system has an input and has an output. Let's consider a mass spring damper system. Over here you can see a system composed of two masses or two boxes that are connected by a system of dampers. This is the first damper, second damper, and springs. This is the first spring and this is the second spring. Input to this system is the control force F that we exert on the second mass and the output of the system can be, for example, the position of the first mass with respect to its equilibrium position. The step response of our system, that is the step response graph, is obtained by applying a special form of input to our system. If we mathematically represent this input, as a mathematical function and if you plot the graph of the function then the step function looks like this. On the horizontal axis we have time and on the vertical axis is our input and the input over time will look like this. Before zero time it will be zero and after zero including zero it will assume some constant value and it will stay constant for time larger than zero. Usually this can be a unit step response or you can modulate the value of this amplitude and it can be for example 10, 20, 30 or whatever you need to excite your system. 
This function is called the step function or the Heaviside step function. And we apply such a function to our system. In case of the mass spring damper system, the force F will assume this form. That is, the force is going to be zero before time zero and after time zero and including time zero, it's going to assume a constant value. Then, when we apply such an input to the system, system will react, and if we measure, for example, the output of the system, that is, in this case, mass spring damper system, if we measure the position of M1, we will see that the output in time will behave like this. It can, for example, oscillate, and then oscillations can die out after some time. Of course, this is just one form of the output of the system and the shape of the graph. Depending on dynamics of the system, we might have oscillations or we might have a completely damped response. This graph over here is called the step response graph. That is to summarize, the step response graph is obtained by applying a step or a heavy side step function as an input to our system then we wait for the system to respond. While the system is responding, we record the output of the system. And that's it. We obtain the step response graph. How do we compute the step response graph, for example, in MATLAB? First of all, we need to specify our transfer function. Here it is. And here's how we do it in MATLAB. Over here, I am parameterizing my transfer function by using the damping ratio and the natural frequency and I'm defining a transfer function over here. You can assume many values for wn zeta and we use the function tf. Then we simply compute the step response by passing to MATLAB's function step our transfer function as an output we are going to obtain the actual output of the system and the corresponding simulation time and after that we simply plot time and the output, and we will obtain, for example, a graph that looks like this. Now that we understand what is the step response of the system, we are ready to define the settling time. For that purpose, let's consider this graph. In this graph, YSS is the final or the steady state value of the system response. Namely, after some time, the system response will approximately settle. And the value of output that the system settles at is YSS, and it's called the steady state value. Then, to construct the settling time, we need to multiply YSS by 0 0.98. And consequently, we obtain this dashed line below the red line. Then, we multiply the steady state value by 1.02 and then we construct this upper dashed line. Once we construct this lower and upper lines, we are ready to define our 2% settling time. The settling time denoted by TS, as you can see it over here, is defined as the time required for the transient response to enter and stay within plus minus 2% of the steady state or final value of our output. Again, the settling time, TS, is defined as the time required for the transient response to enter and stay within plus minus 2% of the steady state or final value. So how do we graphically find our settling time? Well, we just follow our response. The response goes like this, goes like this, goes like this, and then we can see over here, once the response is decreasing, it enters this tolerance that's being bounded by this upper line and the lower line. And I will call this tolerance as a tunnel. That is, our step response enters the tunnel. And if the step response stays within this tunnel after this time, then this settling time will actually be this time over here. However, this is not the case in this graph because, because we can observe over here 
that our response goes down and then it slightly slightly exits over here in this region this tunnel however after this ts time it always stays inside of the tunnel and consequently ts is the settling time here are a few important comments about the settling time first of all in a similar manner and spirit to this definition we can also define plus minus five percent settling time then obviously the definition of the settling time implicitly assumes that the system reaches a finite steady state this implicitly implies that the underlying system is asymptotically stable and you can see over here that this is the case as demonstrated in this figure we can construct the settling time by first drawing a horizontal line starting from the steady state value of the response then we'll simply offset this line plus or minus two percent to obtain an interval or this tunnel then we search for intersection of the system response with a plus minus two percent horizontal line such that the response enters and never leaves the tunnel after the intersection point and this time corresponding to this intersection point is our settling time and this is what we also explained previously next let's define the peak time the peak time denoted by tp over here is defined as the time required for the system to reach the maximum overshoot that is we simply define the peak time as the time corresponding to this peak simple as that and the system can actually have several peak times over here we will have another peak time however here it's implicitly assumed that this is the maximum peak time next let's define the rise time for that purpose let's observe this graph then the rise time is the time required for the system response to go from 10 percent to 90 percent of its final or steady state value so how do we find the rise time first of all we identify the steady state value then we construct 10 percent of the steady state value here it is then we construct 90% of the steady state value, here it is, and then we simply find the time difference between this point and this point, and that's precisely our rise time. Now we are ready to define the maximum overshoot. Maximum overshoot is simply called as overshoot. The maximum overshoot, or simply overshoot, denoted by MP, is defined like this mp is a difference between the maximum value of our response and the steady state value and that's our peak time over here in this definition tp is the peak time for which the step response achieves a maximum value yss as mentioned previously is the final or the steady state value of the step response and ytp is the maximum of our step response next we can define the maximum percentage overshoot the maximum percentage overshoot denoted like this m with the subscript percent p is defined as mp that is this value divided by yss and multiply by 100 for example when someone tells you 10 percent of overshoot you know that basically this value is for example 1.1 and this value is 1 so 1.1 divided by 1 will give you that thing okay and that's it thanks for watching